So, have you been judging supers based on their total damage? I think that's a little bit silly. Just to give you some background, if you're not as terminally online in the Destiny community as me, you got a cool new artifact perk with Act 2 of Episode Heresy called Limit Break, and it boosts super damage by 30% when you're at critical health or when you have an elemental buff matching your super. Because that's kind of cool, a great YouTuber named Llama decided to do some total super damage tests using this artifact perk just to see where everything's stacking up. Totally reasonable, he's a very good YouTuber. He does really good like high-end runs, and contest things like a much better player than me, all that. And he was mostly just doing it for reference. And unfortunately, a lot of community members read that and just saw the numbers and made to jump to really simple conclusions with it. And it just really doesn't make sense with how damage works. Like they're like, oh, Glacial Quake's doing so much damage. It's so good. Oh, Celestial Nighthawk is really bad. It's more complicated than that, but it's not that complicated. Let me explain. Total damage is a bad way to rate supers. It's just not good. How many boss encounters have you ever done that have zero time limit? very very few campaign encounters are like that if you're doing like a story mission you have all the time in the world to do as much damage as you want cool but most of the time you are on a strict time limit most dps phases and raids and dungeons are 15 to 50 seconds long total damage is cool but damage per second is what you really care about like that's why we always talk in dps like that is the important thing and the length of the damage phase matters if you have a 15 second long super but the damage phase is only 10 seconds it doesn't matter if you're fine eight tracks the queen of very short damage faces, whose damage phase lasts like two seconds, that giant damage roaming super does not matter at all. So it's very important to keep that in mind. So what should you do instead? Calculate DPS. So what you want to do, find the total damage of the super. Cool, we have those numbers. And then you need to find the time that the super keeps you from shooting enemies. This can be the animation of an instant super. So how much time between when you can have your gun out, between when you get your gun back out. It can be the full duration of a roaming super, because those do more damage, but it's the full time. That is the only thing you can do. <clears throat> what is important is how long it prevents you from doing damage though. Now, there are some things like Vortex Nova Bomb or Silence and Squall that do damage over time. That damage over time doesn't really matter. It will only matter if your damage phase is going to stop before that effect ends. But that's pretty rare. Like you wouldn't use Silence and Squall on Atrax because you wouldn't get most of the effects. Same Vortex Nova Bomb. You would use Cataclysm Nova Bomb. So, Keep those things in mind, just think about that. Now, the math here is very dumb and very easy. So, example one, say you have a super that deals 600,000 damage and it takes two seconds to cast it, the DPS is 300,000 damage per second. Easy. Now say you have a super that deals 2 million damage. Well, that's cool, but it takes 10 seconds to use. That super DPS is 200,000 damage per second. That's all I'm talking about here. That number matters. Now, with the shorter super, you do have to fill in that time by doing very good weapon damage, and that is still very crucial. So don't neglect that. Make sure your weapons are really set up right. Make sure you got your surges, all that cool stuff. I've just been showing you math, and you're like, does this engineer have a spreadsheet? Yes, of course. Of course I do, <laughs> I always have a spreadsheet and it may look nice and pretty. I'll go over to it in just a minute. So in my spreadsheet, I'm using data from primarily from Aegis, who if you don't know, is a fantastic YouTuber and content creator and spreadsheet maker. He does a lot of amazing damage testing for the community. You should definitely follow him if you don't. And then another community member, Spider Reviver, helped me fill in some stuff that's not quite as meta, but I still wanted a complete set of information. And all of these are using the most optimal exotic aspects and fragments. I'm not using any artifact perks whatsoever, but things like limit break, skill, proportionally, so relatively everything's going to be in the same place. I will have the spreadsheet linked in the description and you can browse it at your leisure, see all the information. I'm also going to be putting out videos soon going over super damage options for each class. Just, hey, if you're using this super, this is how you maximize the damage. That's it. On a high level, there are 13 supers above 200,000 DPS, and five of those are Warlock, five of those are Hunter, and three are Titan. But of the Warlock ones, two of those are duplicates, so it's really only three distinct supers. Now, let's just look at the spreadsheet live, and I'll just guide you through a few things. So, one of the first things to note here is that Stargator Scales Prismatic Nova Bomb Cataclysm is the highest DPS super in the game, which is surprising. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It does really good damage. Uh, you do have to get those Feasts of Light stacked, but pretty solid. More surprising is the next super is Blade Barrage. It has a very quick animation, does a lot of damage with Stargator Scales. That's great. Third on the list, Thunder Crash. Thunder Crash is an awesome super with an awesome exotic and careers of the Falling Star. And one thing to note here though, is that this requires you to shoot yourself as a missile at the boss. So you might lose a little bit more time than this 2.2 seconds repositioning, but keep that in mind, make sure you have a close range weapon or something that you can shoot at the boss while you're backing up. Fourth on the list is Gathering Storm which is a really solid super. It's one of the fastest animation throwing supers in the game. It's just really good. 
than Needle Storm. So Warlock 7, another good option. And then you'll actually see that Nova Bomb Cataclysm without starter scales is still in the mix. Like it's that good of damage from all the buffs that it got. So that's pretty cool. And then Golden Gun with Nighthawk is here, which I think is honestly too low. It was very strong at the launch final shape and it caught a few nerfs just because of that, but it requires a lot of skill. You have to land a precision hit. One thing to note here though, is you can actually push this technical DPS higher because you can pre-cast this before the damage phase starts and then just fire off your shot as soon as damage starts. So you have some options to shorten this. You could also end up with a longer duration too, if you take a little while longer to line up your shot. So keep that in mind. Some bosses with huge crit spots though, it won't matter. You can just pop and immediately fire it off. Still moving down the list, Nova Bomb Vortex, really solid, pretty good here. It's right in line with that, but it does require the boss to be in one spot and just keep getting hit by that. Needle Storm is also pretty solid. That requires Threat of Evolution and Swarmers to get that damage though. So, and then Silence and Squall is a bit further down in DPS, but it's still very solid. And it also has some really great benefits because it freezes. It can proc some fragments to give you instant reloads and it's just great multiplying damage for your team. The last instant cast super that's kind of up in this area above 200,000 DPS is Twilight Arsenal. And this requires Syntheseps to even get there. I generally find this pretty disappointing. Twilight Arsenal has a very long animation for a somewhat instant super and it should probably be doing a little bit more damage than this. So a little bit disappointing. And then we come to Glacial Quake, which is our first roaming super to hit the list. And with starter scales, it does break almost 3 million damage, which is crazy. But once again, the DPS is just over 200,000. Mobius Quiver is also up there right in the same ballpark. It is probably one of the weaker instant supers, but it is there. Starry to Golden Gun is there as well. And then just below that is Twilight Arsenal with Star Eater Scales, which actually has a specific nerf built into it to only give 25% additional super damage, which is really unfortunate versus the normal 70% extra super damage. And then the last of our instant supers is Power Gale Gauntlet's Burning Maul. And this is just so low. It's just really disappointing. So now, all that to say, whole spreadsheet here. Once again, I'll be linking this. You can see things go all the way down. <laughs> way at the bottom is Poor Winter's Wrath. Most of these are roaming supers. They're just not gonna be your best DPS options, but I include the numbers here just so you had a good reference point and the total damage numbers. So you can see those. I've also just included some quick reference tables off to the side that will show you what super exotic is recommended per super. Generally for hunters, you start your scales. For titans, it's gonna be Syntheseps most of the time, unless you can use Quirus or Pyrogo Gauntlets. And then starter scales is okay, but it's really nerfed on Twilight Arsenal. And so then it's really just for your roaming supers on Prismatic. Warlocks have a lot of very specific exotics for roaming supers. Generally for well, you Sanguine Alchemy. I'm not gonna talk too much about the roaming supers, but beyond that, they don't have great options for one-off supers. Geomag Stabilizers is one of the only ones. And then you just use starter scales for everything else on Prismatic. Just circling back real quick, Chaos Reach is here in the mix, but it's pretty low down there, even with Geomag Stabilizers. Now, the one great thing about this is you can right now get that Chaos Reach with Geomag Stabilizers probably at about 15, 30 seconds. It is pretty nuts. So. While it's not the most damage, it will help out a lot and just kind of fills in a lot of damage on quick encounters. Still, not a terrible option. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but I just want to give you a decent overview. If you just want some conclusions, most classes are fine. I've generally been seeing some hunters complaining and they are very fine. They have five very solid damage options that are all very viable. Titans, I would honestly say are the worst off. They just don't have enough one-off supers and one of theirs, which is Line on Exotic, Pyrogo Gauntlets is so far behind, it's pretty much completely out of the meta. Warlocks seem like they're doing pretty good, but really it's just they have Nova Bomb and they have Needle Storm, and that's pretty much it. And Starter Scales is doing a lot of work on Prismatic for that. The one thing I will say in favor of Hunters is Hunters have to do more work to get the super damage. So on like Syntheseps for Titans, they just have to be near enemies for Queers of the Falling Star. You don't have to do anything, you just have to half Thunder Crash and hit something with it. <laughs> And then hunters, meanwhile, like if they're using starter scales, they're going to have to get their super, collect orbs and all that. If they're using Celestial Nighthawk, they have to get their super up quickly, pop it, and then land a crit while having Radiant on top too. And it's just, it's a lot of hoops to jump through for about the same damage. And I understand class balance, but I could see hunters in general being brought up just a little bit more based on effort level, especially that Celestial Nighthawk and Golden Gun. But 
That's really all I've got. Hopefully it's been a short video. I just wanted to talk about that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's keep it civil. I know some people get very heated about these arguments, but I really just want to give people a tool to really think about super damage in terms of something that's more accurate than just looking at total damage. If you disagree, let me know. Maybe we can talk about it, but hopefully this helps you and I will be keeping the spreadsheet up to date. So if you want to keep referring to it, just bookmark it or something and you can find it. Well, with all that, just thanks for watching and hope you have a good one.